We are in the midst of an epic quest. A quest for electric car chargers. So what do you do if you drive an electric car but can't charge at your place of residence? Stick around for some ideas and to hear our unfinished story. So why did we choose a Chevy Volt? Number one priority, we wanted an electric car primarily to do our part in reducing carbon emissions. But uh, we were students with very little income and we knew we frequently had to make long road trips. We didn't have the budget for a longer range EV like a Tesla um, and we could only afford a plug-in hybrid if we sold our second car and we went to being a one car family. For our solution, the Volt really was the perfect option. This car has an EPA estimated electric range of 53 miles, uh, which was plenty for us to do our day-to-day -day driving. Um, the uh, internal combustion engine um, extends the range to 420 miles um, combined, and allowing us to, do, to easily make longer road trips without needing to have a second gas-powered car. You will run into a little wrinkle with Volts that you won't necessarily have with other EVs such as Tesla's, Chevy Volt EVs, or a lot of Nissan Leafs. Um, and that is it has no DC fast charging. No DC fast charging. In fact, the onboard AC charger caps out at just 3.6 kilowatts instead of the normal like 7.2 that most EVs come with. And that means to charge, uh, to fully charge a Volt, it takes about four and a half hours, best case scenario. Because the Volt charges so slowly, it's best to charge at home or at your workplace places you spend a lot of time at. This was no problem at our previous home because we worked with the HOA to get a charger approved, which we installed ourselves. It served us beautifully until we had to unfortunately sell our home and move to a different state for school. We found a listing for an apartment that advertised electric car charging stations. Perfect, right? Perfect, right? Well, we excitedly did some research, applied for the apartment, and even found the electric car star charging stations on Google Maps. My wife emailed the management on multiple occasions just to double check that there were, in fact, electric car chargers. When they responded to her emails, they never addressed the issue of electric car chargers. Big red flag number one. Well, no big deal. There were a lot of other questions in the emails, and they probably just didn't see it, right? Red flag number two was that the management was generally super slow to respond and we were desperate to make sure we actually had a place to move in before my new job started. Anyways, we moved down here in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and there was no way for us to see the apartment complex before we moved in. You can probably see where this is going. So we finally made it down here and discovered that there were in fact no electric car chargers. <coughs> Under the previous management, there had been chargers uh, with the Blink network um, but they had been removed when the new management switched a few months ago. We have talked to the management, sent many polite emails, and left some nice reviews on this issue, all to no avail. So, what now? Well, we'll be honest, things haven't been very great with the car situation, but fortunately, um, in our case, we bought a plug-in hybrid, so thankfully we're able to still get around by driving on gas. Um, but we kind of hate doing that, and it kind of defeats the purpose of buying the car that we did. Hopefully you're not as unfortunate and naive as we were, but if you're in a similar situation where you can't charge at home, let's talk some solutions. Depending on where you work, charging at your workplace is often the next best solution because you're likely spending a few hours at your place of work anyway. I found this charger just a few weeks ago that it's uh, just a couple minutes walk from one of my places of work. Um, so that's been really nice. I've been able to charge a few times here, um, but unfortunately, just the nature of my job, I don't work at the same place very often, um, so I'm not able to use this one very consistently. So what do you do if your workplace doesn't have EV chargers or if there are none nearby? Well, this is what I'm looking into right now. Depending on your state, there are rebates available for businesses who are willing to put in EV chargers. We live in Arizona, and there are some options here. It's pretty likely that your workplace won't be super enthused about the, uh, about the cost to put in EV chargers, but more and more employees are driving electric cars every day. Um, if the company you work for is uh, willing to install chargers, it shows that they are forward thinking, that they, have, that they care about their employees, and that they're willing to make a difference in the race to decarbonize transportation. Installing chargers doesn't need to be as expensive as you might think. 
Um, not all the chargers need to be, you know, really beefy, like seven to 10 kilowatt, you know, level two units. Um, and even providing simply a 120 or 240 volt outlet for employees to use, um, to plug into with their own um, personal portable chargers would be, you know, really helpful as well. In my quest to find a place to charge my car, I ran across uh, this little location. So they've got a couple of different spots that are uh, for dedicated or dedicated for electric vehicle charging, but they don't actually have a charger here. They just have a couple of outdoor outlets with some padlocks on them, and then employees are able to um, get a key and essentially use their own personal portable chargers to charge your car from these outlets. Basically, it's costing this company very little money because they didn't have to, you know, pay for a charger, and but they're still able to provide this service for their employees, which is pretty cool. Okay, so maybe getting your workplace to install a charger is a no-go. What now? More chargers are being installed at places like malls, stores, and restaurants, where you will probably spend anywhere between 30 minutes and a few hours. We've got one just like that here, in the middle of a huge shopping district in Tempe. We've used it a few times, but remember, most Chevy Volts can only charge up to about 3.6 kilowatts, so we'd have to be here for several hours to get any meaningful amount of charge. And personally, we're not big shoppers and we're not likely to spend you know, several hours at a mall. Oh yeah, then there's a pandemic going on. And there are public health recommendations which encourage us to stay at home for everyone's safety. So unless you're cool with sitting in a parking lot for several hours, uh, not recommended during the summer here in Arizona or ever, this situation really isn't ideal. However, charging while shopping can be a totally viable solution if you have a car that supports DC fast charging, such as the Hyundai Kona EV, any clean title Tesla, and most Chevy Bolt EVs and Nissan Leafs. There are a number of shopping malls, gas stations, and retail stores that have DC fast chargers on, on site, and these level three chargers can charge your car to nearly full in 30 minutes to an hour. So while you're doing your shopping, this could be a perfect solution if you don't have a charger at your workplace or home. So rounding back, it's probably pretty clear that charging your car at your place of residence is the best option, particularly if you have a slower charging car like our Chevy Volt. But going back to our story, uh, one of the most frustrating things is that the infrastructure for the chargers here at our apartment is still there, even though the chargers themselves have been removed. Setting up the electrical wiring is the trickiest part, and that's already done. Here are the suggestions we've been making to the management at our apartment complex. Any of these suggestions could be tweaked to potentially fit your situation a little better. All right, number one, install a charger using the infrastructure available. Since there is already power running to the parking spots where EV chargers used to be, it would be very cost effective to install a charger like this Clipper Creek level two unit in one or both of these spots. Since the complex isn't going to be super thrilled about giving their residents free electricity, they could charge a monthly parking fee for residents wishing to use that spot or charge a fee for residents to get a key uh, and a padlock, which will unlock the charger. This would be the easiest and most cost-effective solution and it would benefit future residents. Number two, install a charger with a charging network. The apartment complex was previously using the Blink network with about five separate chargers. This was probably a rather costly um, investment, so it would probably be easier to convince the management to install one or two chargers at first, and then add more in the next couple of years as more people, more and more people uh, start driving EVs. And number three, wire an outdoor outlet to be used for charging. Since these EV chargers would be located at a residential location, they would not need to be very fast or very, very powerful chargers it would be possible to use the existing electrical wiring to attach a simple 120 or 240 volt outlet for residents to charge their vehicles overnight using their own portable charger. The complex could put a lock on the outlet like we saw at uh, the other workplace charger that we found and give a key to residents who pay some kind of monthly fee to use the outlet for charging. This would potentially cost very little for the apartment management, so as long as they're somewhat reasonable, they should be willing to discuss options with you. In conclusion, uh, electric cars are becoming more and more popular, and hopefully the barriers to entry decrease as more businesses and residences uh, install EV chargers. These locations will be ahead of the curve and will have a competitive edge in attracting residents and employees. It makes electric cars more ubiquitous, which will help accelerate the adoption of cleaner and more sustainable transportation, and this truly benefits everyone. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you want to see more content like this in the future, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much.